Welcome to episode 46 of the Twig Snapper podcast. Today I'm joined by three guys on the UWO Titans hockey team. How are you guys doing today? Good. Good, Good to hear it. Um, we got Evan and Lee Hedke and then Mike Chavez. Um, Evan and, and Lee, they're from, from the UP. Um, Mike, where are you from? I'm from Sussex area. It's like 30 minutes outside Milwaukee. Okay, I got you. So yeah. before we start talking about, you know, Titan hockey, ACHA and all that, I just wanted to touch on something with Evan yeah. um, being a goalie for, for Kingsford. Uh, you guys you guys weren't the, the best um yeah you know like i i remember when you'd come into the d and you'd play houghton and you'd face like 50 shots a game you'd make 42 saves but you guys would still get mercied yeah. um what there. was that like you know like for you well, as a goalie like tough to deal with or? uh i don't want to say it's tough to deal with obviously it's it's part of the game and you know i gotta do what i have to in order for us to win and at at least the best part of, for me on the team is to be in the net, be in the net. So I try, show up, do my best. What else can I ask for? Everyone else right. knows that every time I step on the ice, it's it's what I do. Is I give it all I got, and basically that's all I can stand for. Is people know that when I get off the ice, that I gave it one hundred and ten percent, and people can count on me like that. And it doesn't matter. Yeah, I mean, well, the score is obviously we lose <laughs> and stuff like that, but you know. right, right. I mean, like, there's only so much you can do as a goalie. Yeah. Your defense and your forwards aren't giving you any help, which, I mean, it's tough. Like, Kingsford and, and Houghton and Kelly met and Hancock. I mean, they're all on different levels of, like, you know, hockey. Did you guys have travel yeah. hockey growing up, uh, or, or was we, it just we house played, league? We played – well, we played house, but we did AAA in the spring. Uh, in the fall, when I was in fifth grade, that's when I started playing football. I just thought about football in the fall, and in the spring, I thought about golf and AAA hockey. And besides that, it was just house league in the, in the winter. About yeah. it. Yeah. So I mean, it's yeah. a little, little bit different than like the bigger hockey, bigger hockey areas. So I mean, do you think that made you a better goalie? You know, facing so many shots like that. Oh yeah, a hundred, hundred percent. Um, definitely that take. I remember when we were play, we would play like Nagani growing up and stuff like that. And I remember that our house league, house league team, we would pump on like 10, nothing, 11, nothing. Their goalie was actually one of the better goalies at the end of the year, even though, you, as you said, he was letting up 10, 11 goals in high school, but you're playing Houghton Hancock, some of the best high schools in the, in the state of Michigan. It's like Houghton right now is number two in the, or two in the state. Who would have ever expected that? Yeah. Like there's good <laughs> hockey up here. It's like, we play good players. And then we go up, we go down to Oshkosh and we compete and we're, we're playing hockey just like we were up north. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you guys played, I mean, a tough schedule. And you guys, like this year, I was looking at Kingsford and, and they played downstate, like Traverse City West or, you know, a few of those schools. I mean, there's some bigger schools that, that you guys are playing against. So obviously it's um, good hockey. So I, I just want to touch on that that quick to get in the, the Kingsford Fliver hockey talk. Yeah. Oh, I miss it. Yeah. But our soft, my sophomore year, at least senior year, when we had Nick Mervich, Dante, Sawyer Perpich. Okay, you guys, guys, you guys were there, yeah. decent yeah, we that year. I mean, there were those that years where really, really good. You guys competed with Houghton. I re I remember like sitting in chemistry beat class. Yeah, yeah, you guys beat, beat him at the dome or at the D. And, and, and our like chem Korea teacher Murray. was like giving the hockey players shit for losing to Kingsford. <laughs> but you guys were three times and beat him. All three yeah, times was like that the was, first that time was in like, school history. It was like yeah. three out of three out of the five times that they lost to Kingsford were to us. Two of them were in overtime, I think. All three of them were one goal games. It was fun. Yeah. Yeah. And I felt bad number, as a kid, but they were the number eight seed going into playoffs, and we were twenty four, I believe, or twenty seven. And we beat yeah. them all we beat them twice through the regular season and they were still ranked higher than us. But I think they had a <laughs> they had a tougher competition because they're a bigger school so they got the money to go down and play all those showcases down there and yeah play all the bigger teams yeah right like, yeah it's Houghton it's Hancock Houghton Hancock they're down there playing or they're playing Jesuit and Heartland and all those good schools down <laughs> down state it's like yeah. you play those good teams you're gonna you're gonna win some of those games eventually and look yeah. at them now <laughs> They they always go down to that that Trenton that that showcase they have down there every year. And this year, Houghton plays Detroit Catholic Central, and they play like Lake Forest Academy, which is some out of state school. 
So, I mean, they're playing these two big private schools that, I don't know, yeah. it'll be interesting. Yeah. And but that you guys, Catholic one, they've always been good every year. Oh, yeah. Good. Yeah. Every yeah. Year. They're, I mean, they're absolutely stacked in every sport. I was looking at like their high school website once and it, it said like they had like 60 athletes go D1 across all their sports. Like it's just, I believe um, it. it's just nuts. Um, hmm. you, did you guys make a little playoff run that year? Yeah, we lost one yeah. nothing to uh, <laughs> Forest Hills Northern Eastern. And yeah, I uh, would have never thought home. we would have let up or only let up one goal, get shut out and lose. Like no one would have thought that us lose or only letting up one goal, we would have came out with the loss. But, yeah. yeah, 31 shots in the third period, I believe. Wow. And we were out shooting them like 19 to 10 going into their the goalie game. was just a, a brick wall. Yeah, we just couldn't head. put the yeah we couldn't put the puck in the net. I think we hit what four or five posts that game. We had a lot of opportunities that we just either missed or the goalie just robbed us. Yeah, I, and yeah. he was a small goalie too. Yeah, it's just that's brutal. That's a tough way to lose when you're just peppering with shots and you just can't get anything to go. Yeah, especially but, having thirty and, shots in the third period. And we, <laughs> we played like a solid game too. It wasn't like yeah. we it wasn't like we just let it off the gas or anything like that. We were it was I a mean, full game. It was all hundred percent from each team. We yeah. only did one goal and it was a mistake. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's tough. That's tough to deal with. But yeah, it's gotta go down as one of the better Kingsford hockey teams in, in, in the, the program history. Yeah, um, that's and uh, I'm actually going to have Dante on later this week. Uh, nice. Talk about him because he's having a good little career there at Marion. Um, so that's that's good to see. But let's start, let's talk about where you guys are at. Let's talk about the the ACHA. Um, Is college um, hockey? Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> There's a whole podcast out there. Some it's called like uh, the House of Hockey podcast or something like that. Yeah, that's all the guy it's covered. A pretty, it's a pretty big. Uh, podcast i'm pretty yeah, sure he, he only yeah, covers acha club hockey um oh really yeah i'm pretty sure like his whole focus is is like is like club hockey and like club hockey players and like telling their stories and like all that stuff um mm -hmm. so let's, let's start with like recruiting how, how did each of you guys get on the team like do they have recruiters you know they treat it just like ncaa hockey how'd you each get there well actually we'll start with evan because i know you originally were going to play football and, and how did you switch gears well i was i was going into the summer COVID happened still planning on playing football and going into the summer they were all like oh yeah we are we're not really sure what we're doing for the season. You're going to gray shirt, which is if you're familiar with the gray shirt, red shirt, basically the same thing. You're just not on the roster. Uh, so they were like, okay, we're going to do that with you. Uh, you're going to be here for five years. Like the whole plan is to be like pretty much a super senior and play out your final fifth year. And I'm like, I'm sitting there and I was going through high school and I was pretty good in school. Uh, I had a 3.9. I was I'm pretty I was pretty set up to do well in, in the books, I guess. And I'm I was thinking about I came in with 19 credits. I knew that I was gonna load up classes, take these harder classes, and I'm like, well, do I stick out? I can at the end of the day, I was looking at my advising and I'm like, I can get done in three years, I can get done in three and a half. Do I wanna stay for five? Blah, 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 blah. And then as I was lifting through COVID year, uh I ended up noticing that I, I wasn't doing any uh, barbells or anything. I was doing a lot of dumbbells, a lot of running and stuff like that. I ended up cutting a lot of weight. I went from, I was 235. I was supposed to play at, play uh, the edge. So like a JJ Watt kind of position. The, the linebacker coach told me that really my only responsibility is to keep outside. I'm like, okay, cool. That's, that's nice. So I started shedding all this weight. I went from 235 to about 205 in about three, four months. And I'm like, how am I going to be running people over? It's and <laughs> I, I I finally was I entered in my freshman year. I was about two hundred. I was about one in between one ninety five and two hundred. I'm like I was in good shape, and I was like, do I want to keep beefing? Actually, when in the summer, my mom DM'd the uh, or actually personal message the Facebook and was like, hey, I have a kid who's interested in playing hockey. And my mom's like, yeah, I'll send him your information. And next thing you know, Trent Bachman's giving me a phone call. And people are like, oh, yeah, you want to play hockey? And I'm like, well, I'll see if I want to play hockey. Uh, 
at that point, I'm signed up for four classes. I planned on doing workouts all day and football five days a week. And I'm like, how the hell am I going to play hockey? Like, I love the sport. I've been playing it all my life. And I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. I ended up calling my mom like, mom, I don't know what to do. And I'm like, I don't know if I want to play the five years. I'm pretty good at school. I, sh I should be able to get done. What should I do? And she's like, do what your heart desires. And I'm like, I don't want to. I thought about my body, thought about my academics. And I'm like, yeah, I think I'm going to pull the plug on football. Think about my body. And next thing you know, I'm showing up for hockey. Then like almost the week after. And I'm like, you call me that week too. Yeah, it was you like call me that I, week too, and I I was crying. I'm, I'm like, yeah, it was a big big step in my life. I thought I was going to be a football player. Yeah, so like, I basically it was like, yeah, it was done football. Still had another another talent, another desire that I wanted to do, and that's basically history. And when throughout the COVID year we had some skates and all like that, I was basically a rookie. They didn't treat me like a rookie. I had to do a rookie season the year after. But yeah, basically we just had skates the year before, and then the following year is like, yeah, start up and go. And I was basically fresh, and that's that's it. That's about yeah. it. And I, I'm re I'm really happy with this the decisions I made because. Made a lot of good friends, made a lot of good academic decisions. And I think at the end of the day, it was the best for me. And, and that's what matters. If, if you're happy yeah. with where you're at and, and you know, that that's, what's important. Um, what about, you know, Mike or Lee, one of you guys can go next, kind of how you guys got to the team. Better up, Mike. Yeah. So I don't have the uh, crazy backstory to it, <laughs> but uh, I was actually like looking to play in the juniors after my senior year of high school, but the offers that were like coming in and just like, like in my head, it wasn't worth it to sit there for two years and then go play D3 where you have to pay like loads of money to go to a private school or whatnot. So I actually had a buddy here from high school that graduated the year before me. So I like knew about the team. Uh, I didn't watch anything or like no like crazy details, but I showed up. It was like first week of campus. We have like all these like on campus activities you can like go look at or whatever. So I walked over to the hockey stand. I was like, hey, like, How's it going? Like, obviously, none of the other guys knew me, but Ken here from high school knew me. So I walked in there. He's like, yeah, like, I'll set you up with the coach. He sent me his email and everything. And that coach is no longer here. But, yeah, it was just a quick text. And there was like, yeah, practice are these days and come out and join us. I was like, all right. So pretty pretty cut and dry, pretty pretty simple. Yeah. What about you, Lee? Well, wasn't really much of a recruitment process. It was more of I went to Green Bay after I graduated high school. Didn't really do anything for hockey. Didn't as a senior, I, I was kind of hesitant on if I wanted to play hockey still. I mean, I still love the game, obviously. I'm playing it now. It's just I didn't really get anything that I wanted to, and I didn't really work hard enough to get where I wanted to, and I never got any offers. So I went to a camp or a combine after high school and tried to basically put my name out there. And I ended up getting a couple juniors uh, offers. A lot of them were lower end ones. So if you don't play in like your tier one, like your, uh, you're like your NAL, your USHL, you don't really, it's not really worth it, I don't think, unless you're going to just go through the farming progress or the process because it's $10,000 a year almost to play juniors. So the tier, the tier one and the higher levels, it's free, obviously. But as that came on, I graduated uh, college and I was talking to my brother and I knew I wanted to go a four year. And um, the year that I was going to graduate, I was coming and visiting my brother a lot, um, hanging out with him, just being brothers. And I ended up meeting with the team and meeting all these guys like Mike and we have Corey, Trent, Johnny, all these guys. And they're just really, really good guys. And kind of a no-brainer it's like why wouldn't you play if you're gonna come to school yeah so i mean like can anyone play or, or do they have like standards like you've got to be a good enough hockey player i would say your average player may be able to play but i wouldn't say they would get very much ice time it okay I so you actually say, have to be decent to i would say the ACHA get on the team. Is, a, is a it's not a like very prestigious league but obviously there are some good players and then have good players have played in other good leagues too yeah 
I mean, do you get guys that like did play juniors and they realized they weren't going to go, you know, far enough. So then they just decided to come. You yeah. Know, yeah. And play. some of the, some of the kids that we play against have played juniors before and they have been, or they're going, or they are recruited on that team, I should say. Yeah. So what about coaching? Like, like, do you guys have a, a head coach that that's in, that's, you know, like a full-time, you know, that's his job or is it just like some grad student that likes hockey or like what? <laughs> we do have a coach. We have two coaches right now. Um, they are paid. It's yes, they are paid. They're not, they, it's not like they're their full-time job or whatever. I know that like Aurora, they, uh, they offer like 50,000, some, some like, Teams or places that don't have like a NCAA program have the the ACHA one or the D one D two D three and they'll treat them like normal D one D two and D three. Like Aurora's paying their coach like I think it was like fifty thousand a year, and some places are offering like a hundred thousand. I, I couldn't imagine what like Liberty's paying for or any oh, like yeah. East school. Yeah, like and those yeah. are the kids that are coming right out of junior, so they have a lot of money because they they don't have any other teams, other hockey teams, other than their ACHA program. But their ACHA programs are very prestigious in the ACHA. I just right. watched them. I watched one kid maybe two years ago. Now he played for Liberty. Now he's in the East, the East Coast, which is a lower than the ACHA. Right. But he's still yeah. he's still producing in the East League. He's so. he's still playing minor pro hockey. He's still part of yeah. an NHL org. You know, he's just yeah, and he's doing good. Him. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I was yeah. just about to say, like the other day, I was looking at elite prospects at like the Fed League and stuff like that, and a lot of their rosters made up of <laughs> ACHA D1, ACHA D2. Some people were A or AHL. Like, there's people that are coming out of ACHA that are good hockey players. And it's like, what's the guy from uh, Tampa Bay that won the cup? That played in the oh, yeah, league Daniel league. Wildcat. He played like a year. I mean, like ACHA because he was like injured that year. And then he went to go play like major junior in the queue. And now he's playing. He's like the all time games played leader for the Syracuse, Syracuse Crunch. So it's like, oh, really? Oh, that's him. That, that's, I saw that post yeah. too. So, so it all came full league. circle for that guy. He played in the, in the ACHA and then he's playing in the AHL. I mean, yeah. you can't get much better than that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He just, that's he has the most points in uh, franchise history. Yeah. It's crazy. So, you know, obviously, like skill level, like we're talking about, there's a lot of good hockey players, guys. I mean, I know on like the women's side, like Liberty, like the Liberty women's ACHA team has won a ton of national championships and they're just like unstoppable. It, do you guys, like, is there a team like that on the men's side that's just like unstoppable? I say you Mary's pretty good. They just lost to St. Thomas, who we play in like couple or no, they didn't lose to St. Thomas. They lost to who did they get swept by? Was it St. Thomas? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah I think it's St. Thomas went and beat them in their barn. Yeah, like some first weird time stat in the first time in however many years. Home. First time they've yeah. ever lost at home. Yeah, we play them years. Friday Sat or we go Friday, Saturday, and then they come and play us on a Sunday. <laughs> they're gonna be dead. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll be, I'll, I'll be sleeping good. Yeah, they're like the number four ranked team in the nation right now. They're coming to play yeah. up on a Sunday. We thought we played bad on a Saturday. Now we're gonna play on a Sunday. Yeah, after two. Oh, that's gonna. Ugh. Yeah, that'll be a fun one. Yeah, it'll be cool. interesting for sure. It'll get, Is there, it'll definitely um, open up our eyes. It'll be a definitely yeah. a new hockey game. Yeah. Is there a, is there fighting in the ACHA? Yes and no. <laughs> I mean, like you know, in, in high school and like NCAA, you get suspended for fighting. Like, I mean, if a guy drops the gloves, is he going to be suspended for a game? Or oh, I, th I think the official ruling on that is you get like like the next game you're out. But okay. I mean, the guys still do it. Yeah, like refs aren't jumping in the middle of that anytime soon because they're like, yeah, I don't want to be part of this anyway. So they'll just let it go until <laughs> someone goes down and they're like, all right, both of you get out of here. Yeah. Do you have guys on your team that fight? <laughs> Somewhat, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Know. <laughs> not, like, they haven't had anyone. <laughs> not this really, yeah. If that was ringing, like we that. definitely got guys who were coming. Yeah, out it's – but... it, I wouldn't say that we're more of like a fight. Like our team doesn't really fight. We're more of like a policing team. It's like we don't do stupid, stupid stuff unless stuff starts to get out of hand. Right. And that's okay, that's yeah. like last weekend someone went bad and it was a really bad hit. Actually, my, my dad said that it should have been a five in a game. And like that happened and like everyone, the kid knew 
our captain knew what was going on and it was like that's when stuff starts to go south but like as long as you keep the game clean and everything like that and play hockey the way it's supposed to the game stays clean like yeah. there's there's really no fighting in that in one in that higher level acha where they're flying around it's usually when you're pumping a team and it's like what else do we have to lose we're, we're college ho- or we're club hockey it's yeah, right. that's run around trying to kill people and then hopefully you don't get a penalty or you do well yeah when it, when it stays clean it's fun right it's, and it's, it's competitive action, and yeah it's... yeah and i wouldn't say many of our games get like that i don't know if, if we're it, getting pumped we're pretty down and we're not really doing anything <laughs> but yeah if we're pumping we're we're having fun on the bench usually I, I was gonna say something about that like i was looking at your guys' instagram page and you post like the, the weekend scores and you guys will win like one game eight to four and then the next night you'll lose six to two like where does that like complete just like flip-flop come from where you just pumped a team and then they just pumped you there's I some questions we, that are left to be unanswered. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that we happened. Don't know what happened. We, it's been since the first week we demolished Friday night and then come out Saturday. I think we just barely won. I can't remember who we played. Oh, Northern. We played Northern at Marquette. And I think we smoked them Friday. The first men came there Saturday and we were down four to two of going into the third or something like that. And they ended up scoring like what? A second or two left to go into overtime. Yeah. So I mean, it's out. just like you guys are, you know, something's just not clicking that that next night, or, or you guys waste all your energy on the first night and then you're tired the second night. <laughs> oh, I think no, it's I think overconfidence a too. Yeah. A lot of it's just going in, and we we don't really know what the team is doing, so we go in there, play our best, and then we come the next day and we're like, oh, we're just gonna shit kick this team, and then <laughs> yeah. Our egos get yeah. over ourselves. I mean, are, there, are some of these teams, you know, I noticed like too, like some of them, like you just, you smoke them both nights. Like, are there just some of these teams that are just brutal? Yeah. yeah. Some of them were like this last one we played was stout. I think it was just a pickup game because we had a couple games canceled. They only brought like 12 or 13 players, which sucks. I mean, I feel bad for the guys on stout because who wants to drive three hours to, get their ass handed to them 12 to to two and then you play a bunch of pricks and then they're doing this and that to you and it's like it's not fun it's also not fun for us like i i mean killing a bunch of people and scoring a lot of goals and getting a lot of points is fun but i like playing competitive hockey and i think some of the other guys do too right so when you're just yeah you're just beating up on these kids and And if they've only got 12 guys i mean like they're, they're yeah, running. you just you're you're basically just shoving the puck down their throat and chasing <laughs> them and just scoring and doing whatever you want basically. After the second period or first period, you just it's all game on from there. Yeah. So, Mike, you you've got 33 points in, in 18 games now. Would you would you say this is a scorers league or more of like a defensive league? I mean, are there guys putting up? A lot more than you, or are you are you higher up in the league? You know, where I mean, do you sit? I mean, I don't like to check often because I hate that like notion of like having that in the back of your head. But yeah. like me and the other kid that are like leading our team in points, we are like top like thirty in the country points wise. Okay, but there's also it also has to do with like the funding too. Like a lot of teams can play thirty five games a year, whereas like we're only playing like twenty something. So it's like, I don't know. There's like a big difference. Like you can't really tell. I guess like points per game would be the best way to like look at it. But I don't yeah. know. It, it kind of varies. Some, some guys, maybe they have more points, but their team also played 10 more games. So yeah. you got to look at that. Yeah. And they might play like better teams too. So they get better reps and then come in the coming years, they know what's, what they have to yeah. do. Yeah. Yeah. I think one of the coolest things like about like club hockey is you guys play everyone. You know what I mean? Like you guys play schools that are, have, you know, D one football, like you guys played Iowa a couple years ago, you know, you played their club team, but like, you know, a D three school, you know, you're just playing D three schools, you know, you know what I mean? Like you guys are playing club teams from all these like major universities and, and they all have like, I don't know. Club team uniforms are all pretty sweet. Like they've all got awesome hockey 
uniforms and you got down south teams. I know you guys played uh, DePaul, Iowa. You play Northern, like you said. You play Tech. All these schools that have either D1 hockey or, or D1 football. Um, so you guys are like traveling all over playing, you know, random teams. Yeah, I think Marquette was four hours, five hours on the bus. And then yeah. DePaul was another two or three. So we've, we've been traveling a lot. And it's actually really cool that you bring that up because it's weird to think about if you look at the hockey in Wisconsin, all these D3 teams like SP, Marion, um, who else do we have? Eau Claire, all these, all these teams around here in the Midwest. It's crazy to think about that. They play them and then we play other big schools. Yeah. It's weird to think about like why these are kids that are at this school to literally play hockey. And not that they don't play those people or the other teams. It's just there's so many teams in this range that they can play. Yeah. I mean, and then you guys like like we like you play Iowa once, but you also play like Finlandia's club team. So I mean like yeah, it's, it's, you you go from Iowa, which is a big ten school. And you go from Finlandia, which might have 500, 500 people. <laughs> yeah. There might be a thousand, what, ten thousand people in that city. Uh yeah. I mean, I was actually oh, just in talks. my my sports administration class. It's taught by the athletic director at Tech, and she was like talking about like how they're oh. like they've been looking at like, is it worth it to expand seating at the SDC? if they have a sold out barn, that's like 4,000 people. And she's like, there's like 25,000 people in like a 25 mile radius. So like, are you going to get that many more fans? So yeah, like you got like Houghton County, maybe like a little bit of Barriga and, and Kuna County. You got like maybe 30,000 people from all these counties. And they are traveling into Houghton too. It's not like Houghton is right there for everything. I mean, everything yeah. else is 20 minutes on Tanagan. Yeah, yeah, on you're looking at an day. hour. I mean, yeah, Calumet. I mean, it's it's like it's fifty. You know, in the winter, bad driving. You could take you yeah. like a half hour to get from Calumet to Hancock, even though it's and not that, that, that weather is unpredictable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I mean, like, yeah, you 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 see that you're playing like different markets for you guys. Like, yeah, you come to Finlandia, you play in the Holco, but then you like play some of these other schools. They've got to have. Well, I mean, the, the ones that have D1 hockey and club hockey, does the club hockey team play in the D1 barn? Sometimes. We did play at we, the Barry. Yeah, at Northern we played at the Barry. But I think – were we going to play Tech at the SDC or something? We would have. I think we would have. Yeah, we don't – I think Tech does – or not the SDC. They play we, Tech at – We Tech plays at the D. I'm when we were sure. there for uh, yeah. to play at Houghton, they played uh, – Superior, superior at the D, but when Mike played them, like what your freshman or sophomore, or you played them in the in the SDC. Yeah. So I mean, it all depends. Breaking but I mean, ice. like, yeah, you you guys could be playing in a D one barn one night, and then just like the community rink the next night. <laughs> <laughs> like, we, we like to take in those D one rink experiences while we're there. Yeah, <laughs> we right. Because I mean. Watching. <laughs> There, there's not much take in when you're playing at the Hulk or, or some of these. <laughs> no, I mean. the D is not. I mean, the D is special. It's a special place in my heart for sure. Yeah, I mean, it's just like a but, classic barn too. But Yeah. I hate playing in the D. <laughs> that place is I cold. hate it. Well, I have too many bad memories of getting smoked well, or what? Well, that too, but uh, <laughs> the just how the rink is, so, is smaller and you play a team like Houghton in high school, they're all – they're all defensive orient orientated, and then when they get across the ice, it's all attack, 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 attack. And since it's so it. such a narrow rink, and it's I think it's still the same length, they come flying across the blue line and they just dump it, and it's like they have no space, and they just come and just boom, bombard yeah. the the corner, and then they just have the one guy standing up on top, or they they're just always positioned right, and you just get picked apart by a team that just has been practicing on this small rink their entire career. It's like. They just pop us. Those boards are not fun. Yeah, it's, it's, it's only they just good get new boards for, too. It's it also, only good uh, for them in the regular season though, because then they play the regional, you know, all that crap at Tech for playoffs. You know, oh, yeah. so you you go from playing on that small rink to now you're playing on a college rink. I mean, that's a brutal, yeah, adjustment. That, it's different as far as the rink size, but those 
boards too, not many people realize, but those boards at the SGC and the kick plates kick a lot. So a lot of people can take advantage of throwing the puck down low and those pucks will come out in front of the net. At some older ranks, those kick plates just wear out and they're just, they're duds basically. Yeah. <laughs> you just yeah. hit them and they don't do anything. So what kind of a barn do you guys play in at UWO? Oh, <laughs> why on 20th Ave? Yeah, play in a Y. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> best, place you can, best place you can find. Uh, it's so the only place here. There's just but, no, other, no other rinks around? Or? Nina. Uh, yeah, I, we could go to Nina, but that's like a 20-minute drive. We almost made the switch to going up there. But, like, we were looking at it. It's like no one wants to drive. 20 minutes. So you guys are playing in one of those community rinks where you're just shit talking. Yeah. Exactly. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's nothing you wrong guys, with uh, that at all. Or, no, there, there's not. We can yeah, play you're, hockey. That's... You're playing hockey. It's fine. It's just yeah. you know, like once you do get a chance to play at the Barry or something, you're like, man, this is kind of nice. <laughs> yeah. You're like, yeah. You're like, dang. So I have to walk on the ice and it's warm, or like I can sit in the locker room and I can spread my arms out and like, hey, I'm good now. Yeah. But I mean, like, it's not. I mean, I know, like, there was just something. Did you guys see the thing about the University of Michigan women's club team put out the thing about mm-hmm. like they had to pay for ice team ice time and then David yeah, at the was like, I'll at pay for your ice time. Uh, at so the I university, mean, like they didn't. Well, they have to oh, rent their ice. At the university, like. Um, I don't know what the rink is called. Yeah. Uh, is it the? North... Do they play at the Yost or? Mm, I'm not even sure. Mike, do you know? I don't know. Anyway, what were you gonna say, Evan? Uh, I there's this one hire that I work with. Uh, she played on Northern's D2. Uh, I don't eight CHA girls team. I don't know if it's D2, D3, but she was she was telling me how much she was paying. I it was. It was outrageous. Like she, she was talking about that she has to pay for the ice time, travel, and everything like that. And like I couldn't even imagine. Like that's yeah, ridiculous. It's it's honestly going. ridiculous. Yeah, it it is ridiculous that you know these club teams have to. I mean, you know, you can't expect these club. Te- where are they going to get all this funding from to like pay for ice time? I mean, universities pay for so much stupid shit. They can pay for their their club teams to have a little bit of ice time. I mean, it, it it's. We get it's funding crap, but... from the school, and we have to provide our uh, budget, our budget um, proposal to the school, and we we get funding from the school. But yeah, ice time is cheap or expensive. It is yeah. way. It's it's when you look at the price for I or hour for ice, it's ridiculous how much you actually have to put on the table right away. Yeah, and it's got to be worse in areas where there's not a lot of rinks. I mean, like yeah. everyone's competing to use that ice. Well, Everyone wants. Yeah, just yesterday we got our our ice time that we paid for our practice. It got taken away for a high school makeup game. Like yeah. there goes our ice time. Yeah, and we only they, have two practices a week too. Oh, really? You guys only? I mean, that that's that's tough. You guys, you know, yeah. practice twice, and then you got to go play games against. So, I mean, I don't, you know, do you guys know, like, are, is that standard for all club teams or are some of them meeting like every day? There are definitely teams that meet every day. I think yeah, Marion does, does, I think. Yeah, eight, Marian, five times like, a week, four times a week. Yeah. So, I mean, those guys are going to be a little more. But the other thing, too, is they have two rinks, but I'm pretty sure the school doesn't own those rinks. But they still yeah. have two rinks where they can do something because they're, they're, uh, NCA team is on the big rink, and then usually their ACHA team plays on the smaller rink. Yeah. Do you guys um? Are there is anything anything wild happen in any of your games? Anything that's just like I don't know, crazy for any any reason? Anything? <laughs> no. We did Nothing? get Michigan. We did get Michigan on once. Really? I was <laughs> told before that. I was already gone before that. I was out. Yeah. Uh, it was all over chicklets. It was everywhere. Yeah, that was, <laughs> that was embarrassing. But, uh, Besides, like, fights or anything like that happening, any anything crazy would be, like, there's some crazy highlights that come out of the ACHA that people don't really see or anything like that. Like, out of, out of anything that I would see crazy is, like, 
one of, one of our teammates, like Zach Johnson, he'll pull some of the stupidest sh- shit out of his ass sometimes. And <laughs> like, it's like, how do you do that? Like, I know he's not the only one doing that. And you know, there's 200 other teams or how many there are and you know, good yeah. hockey everywhere. It's like, yeah, but there's right. definitely, I mean, definitely times where like some stupid stuff go on. Just look up ACHA show on Instagram. There you go. <laughs> uh, not, not really in any of our games, but yeah, well, I guess that's a good thing and a bad thing. You know, like it's kind of fun when you get some crazy stupid shit once in a while story for later, but then you got to like deal with it. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, you know, we've, we've had a wild season. That's for sure. It's definitely are you guys, a... are you guys in like, you know, do you guys have a chance at playoffs or anything? Yeah. So right now, I don't know. It's weird. Cause our conference is split into like two divisions. And we're technically in like the bottom division. So they'll take like the top, they'll take those like six guys in that other like division and then the top two in our division. And we'll play like an eight team like playoff bracket. And the winner uh, gets a bid straight to regionals or whatever. And then we also get an auto bid because our conference is so good. Our conference is stacked. It's unfair. But then we get like an auto bid for like whoever's that like ranked like top like 13 in like the central region too they also get a bid to to regionals as well yeah do you guys do you guys think like you guys are you know doing well enough where you guys could make a little run or you guys don't want to even think about it and jinx it or (laughs) if if i think we could yeah if we play the way that we could we could definitely make a run yeah Yeah. but it's like every single time we'll implode on ourselves yeah, if it, that's the worst thing you can do is shoot yourself in the foot, I guess. It's the easiest thing to do, too, sometimes. I mean, it's your own mistakes, not even, like, the other team's just so good. It's just, like, I don't know. You see it all the time in, in everything, yeah. in the NFL. Yeah, you know, you're, like, good grief. Could you – like, the, the Cowboys, you know, you got their kicker there missing extra points. <laughs> I mean, you're just kicking yourself in the nuts when you do that kind of shit. Like, yeah, I mean, <laughs> he lost four points, basically. Yeah, I mean – a close game with that. Yeah, it's 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 the the internal mistakes that are the worst. So, what about you guys? Have a pretty good team chemistry, pretty tight bunch of guys. Yeah, I would say. Most I, part, I don't yeah. think we don't have really anybody who hates anybody on our team. I think we're all we all get along very well. I think the yeah. other thing too is we kind of set it from the get go that like we do have a good team here, and we all have to buy in to what we want to do and which is win. So yeah. I think that kind of settled from the start. And we're all good you, buds too. Yeah. Like on, guys, off the ice. Everything. Yeah. Good. Like do you guys just hang out a lot or do you guys just get sick of each other? We're, with, we're hanging out with each other all the time. Every day. Mike was over last night. Mike, Mike only lives two doors down. Like we have there out of like this uh, block that we live on. There's like three, three hockey or hockey houses i guess you'd want to call them yeah. is like we have three hockey players in our house they have two over there there's two across or down the road it's all like a little community it seems like it's fun yeah so when you guys throw ragers you're not bothering the neighbors because you know the neighbors are at your party <laughs> yeah that's <Yeah>. right <laughs> you don't have to worry about noise complaints or anything we also like if people need rides too because a lot of us are older on the team that's the other thing too we do have a huge age group like we got one guy who's 25 i believe and then we got kids who are just turning 18. that's the other thing about club hockey too is like a lot of these kids are really really it's a huge age gap like when you have all these teams from like these d3 teams or d1 teams they're all 21 22 19 years old 20 years old because they all went and played junior Right, so you you guys got a handful of those old guys, but then you got you know yeah we got kids who guys dust since it was born, and we've got kids who are pulling out iPhones as soon as we get out of the womb. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember yeah. going around the locker room being like, "When were you born? When were you born? When were you born?" It was like ninety seven, two thousand four, and I'm like, "Holy shit, I'm getting old." <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, hey, How long am I gonna be here? <laughs> Oh, you guys got visitors coming into your rooms. What's... Roommates. 
Yeah. All right. Well, I figure that's a that's a good place to wrap it up. We talked about everything with the ACHA. There, there probably is to talk about. Um, it's a what would you say an underrated league? I would say so. Definitely. Yeah. It needs, uh, yeah, it needs a little more media coverage. I mean. I yeah, hundred percent. I would say that is definitely the thing it's lacking almost. And I've had a couple players like um, there was a kid I played uh grow, played with growing up for a very 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 long time like since i was probably 10 11 and he went and played at davenport which is i think a very good acha program yeah and i'm pretty sure he was the last point in it too i mean he was a great hockey player and i don't see why he wouldn't i guess one more thing do you guys know of anyone that like plays acha for a little bit and then they move up and play like actual ncaa d1 or d3 because I, I know on Finlandia, there's there's one guy, if you read, um, it said that he played like a year of ACHA because they I don't know he wasn't ready for the team yet, but then like he moved up to the NCAA team. There's some I people think... from Marion that dropped down and played, or I think there was a guy from Marion that dropped down to ACHA. Yeah. So he went the other way. He, he went from yeah. the D3 team yeah. down. But who knows? He, he could work his ass off and be up there next year. Who knows? Yeah. I don't know what, is, what he has going on. But yeah, so I mean, it, it could happen, and yeah, all right. I don't have anything else. You guys have anything else you want to add in before we call our quits? Follow UWO hockey Instagram, <laughs> yeah, we'll, 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 follow the Instagram, the plug. <laughs> get, a, get, a, get a quick plug for the team before we that's yeah, right. Before we end it, well, thanks, fellas, for coming on. Gotta, I always, you know, one thing I want to do on my podcast is like try to get people from every league so i mean i've had people from like all different european leagues and then pro leagues and, and ncaa d1 d3 everything but had to get acha on there yeah right you got to pump your tires a little bit all right thanks <laughs> oh, fellas yeah. yeah thank yeah. you yeah thank, thank you for the rest of your day <laughs>